Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Evans. I'm the CEO of Sierra Nevada Memorial Hospital, and I wanted to share with you some things that are going on surrounding this COVID-19 pandemic that we are facing internationally, some of the things that are happening at the hospital. So I'm going to kind of run down a list of a few things that I've been getting a lot of questions about and uh, things that people are concerned about in the community, and really just make sure people know what's going on at your local hospital. So we're going to talk about COVID-19, we're going to talk about the preparations that we're making to anticipate uh, a very probable surge of patients. We're going to talk about our uh, surge planning. We're going to talk about supplies. Supplies have been a big issue in the news and people are wondering about masks and ventilators and that sort of thing. Um, we're going to talk about workforce issues because in a community that's in a rural location, uh, we don't have access to all of the different uh, skilled labor that other places do, but we certainly have some outstanding people in this community and we are building uh, additional capacity for COVID-19. I um, want to talk a little bit about some of the partnerships that we have in the community because what we're finding is there are people stepping up in a variety of different ways all over Nevada County to help the hospital and to help one another, to help neighbors, and it's actually incredibly inspiring to see that occurring. Uh, and finally, I want to uh, just make sure that you all know what you should be doing in the community to make sure that you're safe, make sure that uh, you're, you're helping, try to minimize COVID-19, and try to flatten the curve, as they say. Um, so on testing, a lot of people have been asking me about testing of COVID-19 and you know, how many tests are being done and can you do testing and where's the testing located and all that kind of thing. And honestly, it's been actually fairly complicated and it's been changing on just a daily basis. Uh, there has been less testing in the United States on the front end of this COVID-19 pandemic than a lot of other countries have had. There hasn't been um, an infrastructure to test thousands, hundreds of thousands of people everywhere. So what we're seeing now, though, is an increase in the capacity of testing in labs all over the country. We've been doing testing um, you know, in a couple of different ways. Certainly, we're testing inpatients who we think might have COVID-19. And so far, we haven't had any positive tests come back on patients in the hospital, but that could change at any time. It can change today. Uh, and we expect it to. We expect there to be positive COVID-19 tests on patients that are admitted to the hospital. We're also testing pa uh, patients in the emergency department if we think they have COVID-19, whether they're admitted or if they're going home to uh, manage their illness uh, at home. So those are a couple of the primary ways that most hospitals are testing, and we have been doing that too. We have also set up a drive-through uh, testing clinic, which is something that you know a lot of hospitals have really wanted to get that going, and we actually were able to get that going in Sierra Nevada, which was very interesting to a lot of the media. It was on KCRA, and uh, NPR wanted to cover it. Uh, it was in the New York Times, and a lot of other outlets as well. So uh, the way that works is folks that have symptoms of COVID-19 check to check in with their doctor, and if their doctor thinks a test is indicated, then an order is made for that test to be done, and then patients can go to the drive-through on scheduled days. It's changed a little bit though, and I wanna be really clear about just how that's changed. We're not testing everybody in the community for COVID-19 right now. It's, uh, it's a burden actually to test hundreds and thousands of people that have mild symptoms and could really just stay at home and manage their symptoms there without actually coming into the drive-through where uh, our employees have to put on the personal protective equipment and everything. So what we're trying to do is limit it to just folks that really need the test to be done. That's healthcare workers, folks with complicated medical histories and those, those types of things. And what we're asking is that uh, anybody who has questions about that, talk to their doctor about whether or not they're a person who needs a test and that's the way you get the ball rolling for the drive-through. Um, there's going to be additional testing at the region. Dignity Health is putting together laboratory testing that we'll be able to use, and that way we'll get our turnaround times to be much quicker. The tests have been taking quite a while in some cases. We've had tests come back as quickly as in the same day, and then in other cases, uh, it's taken multiple days for tests to come back, including with the drive-through, and that's been frustrating for some patients. So we're hoping that with the increased testing capacity and ability to do them quickly, we'll start to see better turnaround times on the tests. Um, on preparation, you know, there's, there's so much preparation that's going on at every hospital in the country. Certainly that's true it's here in Nevada. We're doing a ton of work to make sure that we're uh, able to deal with the potential of a surge. And we anticipate a surge of patients with COVID-19. We expect to see more admitted patients. We expect to see more patients who are quite ill, actually, with serious respiratory illnesses, requiring things like ventilators. And so we've been in the process of really trying to ramp up for that capacity with our so-called surge planning. 
who are working with a lot of partners to make sure that our search planning is really robust, certainly with the county, public health, the school district, uh, law enforcement. We're working with our hospital partners that are in the region, the other Dignity Health Hospitals, and other systems as well, and the state, to make sure that our supply chains are robust. We are um, ensuring that we've got enough of the uh, ventilators and personal uh, protective equipment that everybody is looking to really beef up at this point in time, and that's what we've been spending a lot of time on. Um, so that's been really good to see. We're also working with our physician staff. You know, in this, in this community, we have wonderful physicians, and we actually have some folks that don't work in the hospital anymore. Maybe they retired, or maybe they're doing other types of jobs, and we've had a lot of folks wanting to volunteer if there is a surge, so we're creating processes for that to happen if needed. And the same thing with nursing staff. Tremendous spirit of volunteerism in Nevada County, and uh, not just from the medical professionals, but many, many others. And folks have been donating. Uh, equipment, they've been donating masks from a variety of sources, and that's making a big difference. So thank you to all of you who have been looking to see how you can actually help mitigate some of this. Um, I want to say a little bit about communication. You know, we've been doing a lot of communication on the radio, on KVMR, on KNCO. Uh, we've been you know, giving interviews on NPR, on KCRA. Uh, and we've been working with the newspaper. We've also been on Facebook and a little bit more, uh, more deliberately on Facebook and Peeps and Ubinet. And so we're trying to make sure that all these different channels of communication are, are uh, getting information that, I, that is pertinent and timely because things are changing so quickly we really need to keep these updates ongoing. What you can do. You know, I feel like, uh, you know, everybody is really wanting to do something active to really try to make sure that they're doing their part to make sure that COVID-19 does not create this very large spike of patients and overwhelm the healthcare system that we've seen happen in other parts of the world, like in Northern Italy. Um, and we're seeing you know, concerning uh, things happening in New York. So the best thing we can do is really follow the advice of the social distancing and uh, staying at home, just sheltering at home. Because if we can just decrease the number of connections between uh, people physically, then what we'll do is reduce the spread of this virus and we'll be okay in terms of the capacity of our hospital and the other hospitals in the area. So that's the name of the game. So when we're being asked to stay at home, that's a very serious thing, serious thing that people need to do. We do appreciate the, the volunteering, uh, but make sure that you do everything you can from the, the shelter of your own home and follow those instructions uh, from the authorities. Um, I'll just finally say um, that Sierra Nevada has been here since 1958 where you know, we've been taking care of infectious diseases for uh, the entire time we've been open. We, we have a lot of expertise in this, uh, so we're, we're confident in our ability to manage this. However, it's a serious situation and this is a unique situation to us uh, and we're working with all of our partners to make sure we take it very, very seriously. It's a time to be serious but to not panic and so that's what I'm asking all of you to do. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to serve this community for many generations to come, and I thank you very much for listening to this message. Thank you.